Good day everyone and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the O-ring and how one might actually argue that it's a bit of a living fossil in terms of the manufacturing components. They were first brought to the market way back in the dawn of the 20th century and yet for their absolute simplicity and the basic nature of the role they perform, they are still incredibly widely used today. An O-ring, also known as a packing or a toric joint. Now, a toric joint, what exactly does that mean? A mechanical gasket in the shape of a torus. It's basically a ring called the torus of revolution. As the distance from the axis of the revolution decreases, meaning the inner circle becoming smaller and the outer moving inwards, the ring torus becomes a horn torus and then a horn torus transitions into a spindle torus and finally degenerates into a sphere. All this basically means is on our circle we have got two different axes contributing towards the three-dimensional shape. Now that we have a general understanding of how the o-ring came to have its shape and where it got partial of its name from. Let's understand why it was designed. As the o-ring was designed to be seated in a groove and upon assembly to be compressed between two parts or more creating a seal at the interface. As there is two applications that you can use an o-ring for which is static and dynamic. And next, we'll get into what is static and what is dynamic applications. Static application. Static. Permanently fixed. Not being able to move. A O-ring compressed, resulting in zero clearance. Thus, this material is vulcanized and impermeable to fluids and gas. Also, protecting the material and resisting degradation. Dynamic applications, dynamic, a force that simulates change or progress within a system or process. The dynamic o-ring is used in pump shafts, hydraulic cylinder pistons to seal around a rotating or moving body. Wow, there was a lot of big words and terminology for something as simple as a donut shape but purely in existence to create a better and more leak-proof seal between two other components. They aim to eliminate the loss of gases or fluids. In this, they are more a gasket. So, the major difference being that an o-ring is more commonly used in high-pressure environments where a normal cork, paper or rubber gasket will be prone to failure. An engine o-ring, especially one used in a high performance or turbo engine, is a good example of a product that has to be rugged enough in design and material construction to handle various challenging requirements as heat, pressure and chemical compatibility. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 